Remember the 1980s hope chests that were so popular? They had decals and all sorts of country looking decor on the front. And this one had a lot of scratches. Our client decided that she wanted to bring it into the 2020s and that all starts with a sander. Now I'm using my DeWalt Orbital Sander and it's suited up with 120 grit sandpaper. Also notice that I'm wearing a respirator. Mine is a 3M respirator and it really does help to filter out all that dust that is stirred up by the orbital sander. If you can do this with the large garage door open like you see I'm doing, that's really the best plan. Just keep stay in a well ventilated area while you're doing this. The 120 grit sandpaper really does take all those scratches out, but I don't want to just end with the 120 grit. I backed it down to the 220 grit which gave it a nice smooth finish. The next step was to clean it and I always start cleaning with my shop vac. I have the little brush attachment on the end of my shop vac and I give the thing a good going over all the nooks and crannies. I get into all the grooves. I, I vacuum the inside of it. You can see here I'm getting all that dust that's laying on top of the uh, decal part of the hope chest. I even lifted this up and I vacuumed underneath. There were a lot of cobwebs underneath the hope chest and I got all those with the shop vac. Once all of the vacuuming was done, I mixed up a container of simple green and hot water and I'm using a microfiber cloth and I'm just going over the whole thing making sure that I have all the dust and all the grime and grit and all the stuff that lands on there over years and years of use. The simple green is, is really easy to use. It's biodegradable so it's not uh, dangerous to the environment. It's safe on the furniture and I know that it's going to thoroughly clean this piece of furniture really well. I just rinsed out my rag several times and just cleaned it inside and out, upside down and all around. The next step is to seal it. I use Zinsser shellac to seal it and a chip brush that's disposable. This sealer works perfectly to prevent any kind of bleed through and this wood had a lot of orange tones to it and it was probably made out of cedar. Obviously it's a cedar chest and I didn't want any of that those red or orange tones to come through the light color of paint that I've chosen for this or that my client chose for this piece. I went over the whole thing and I put one good coat on this hope chest and once that was dry I put on a second coat just to ensure that the bleed through would not happen. Applying the shellac also helps me to create a crackle effect that will add to the age, the aged look that I'm going with for this piece. Once both coats of shellac were dry, I came in with Zinsser Stain Blocking Primer. It's a white primer, and on this you can see that, see that light coat that covers the decal for the most part? I did like a dry brush technique just to make sure that I could get that decal completely covered. I mixed up Miss Mustard Seed Milk Paint in Mora, a beautiful soft color. You're just gonna love it when you see it finished. And here I am coming in with the first coat. I'm using a zebra 
Palm Pro paintbrush, which is my favorite. This paintbrush really does work well with my hands. Maybe you've noticed that stool that I've been using throughout this project. It's on wheels, it has a little shelf underneath and a, and a soft cushion to sit on, and it just moves me all around the project. did come back in and I painted a second coat over the whole piece and I let it dry. When the paint was completely dry, I came back in with Miss Mustard Seed Wax and a chip brush and I applied it to all the areas on the outside of the Hope Chest. You can see here I use that chip brush and it just I can really work that wax in well. When the wax is dry, you buff it out and this is what you get. Look at that age crackle finish. Isn't that so pretty?